Hey guys, and welcome back to the penultimate part of Sonic and the Secret Rings. We're on cleanup duty now. We're going to be heading back <laughs> through the. Shut up, Rishi. It has to be done. We're heading back through the rest of the game to do a uh, special set of missions that might be giving it to. Uh, too much praise, but a, a certain order of missions, there we go, a certain order of missions that we need to undertake in order to unlock the mission that gives us each world ring. Sadly, each world does not possess a boss, so uh, enjoy, I guess. Oh, brace yourself, I think, would be uh, a better proclamation right now. I, I concur. So this is going to be a long one, because it's... This is like, we're going to be going through like all the different worlds and that and some of these levels won't have unlocked earlier, some of them will and it's incredibly weird how it's structured. I know we've been through that but it really comes to a head when you've got to do the clean up like this. Yeah, yeah, like uh, when uh, Flame and I were recording the footage we were actually surprised there were a couple of missions that uh, were on the guide like in the uh, the level order we were using but they just weren't there after we beat a Razor Jin. so uh, I don't know, as long as you're following this playthrough and you should because we know what we're talking about obviously um, citation needed <laughs> I <one>. guess <laughs> But, uh, yeah, follow this uh, here playthrough and you should be good to go. Of course, if you don't want to hear us talking over the footage, we do have a non-commentary version as well. So, uh, pick your poison, really, but don't actually poison yourself. We're, uh, we're not liable to pick up your hospital charges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole apocalypse going on. We kind of can't afford legal fees right now if you can kind of, you know, not do that. <laughs> Jesus. There you go. This is, this is true, but also you guys seem to forget that we all live in the UK and we, we do not have a private healthcare service just yet. Well, let's, let's hope it stays not just yet and not coming soon, you know? Yes, let's hope indeed. Now, some of the missions will be that short, some will be a fair bit longer. So uh, I hope you two have uh, suitable commentary topics to talk about, by which I mean you'd better have suitable commentary topics to talk about. Yeah, I sure have things to talk about. Um, that means uh, reaching. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's see. Um, bum da -da. That, that's, um, that's not a topic, that's just a sound. All right, I'll do your job for you. Your favourite underrated, in your opinion, Sonic game. And if you say Secret Ring, so help me God, I'm fucking shutting off the call and going to bed. <laughs> um... Sonic and the Black Knight, clearly. <laughs> I was gonna say that. It, it, yep. it got in. It got, got so hugely lambasted, despite the fact that one, it's a better game than Secret Rings, and that just there was no reason for all of the ridiculous hate that it received. It had its problems. Don't get me wrong, but like seriously, it was not worse than Sonic 06. Even though I've never played Sonic 06, so I can't really say that, but I can, of course, because everyone knows that Sonic 06 is crap. Alright, okay. Underrated, probably a bit hard to pin down as you pick the same game, obviously. Uh, how about Guilty Pleasure Sonic game? Obviously, Secret Rings is mine. I have another one. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you both two guesses each. Um... What's the worst possible opinion you could have? It's hard because there's a lot to pick from. Um, <laughs> have you secretly been a Cinderay for Shadow this whole time? Uh, no, that's one guess gone from you. Richie, do you want to take a crack at it? Um. Oh, this is too hard. I mean, I suppose would like... I hesitate to say this because I feel like I might get some hate for it, but like SA1? That's one of my favourite Sonic games, mate. You don't oh, know okay. me at all. Wrong end of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back over to you, Flame. You've got one guess left, mate. Um, is it 06? No. Richie? Because that's one of mine. Sonic Advance 2? No, that's also one of my favourites. Why don't you know me? Oh, for frick's sake. <laughs> Okay, it was Sonic 3D Blast, otherwise known as Flecky's Island. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, that game's boring. You have shit taste. <laughs> it looks nice, it has a great soundtrack, and, you know, isometric 3D platformer or not, it's still pretty fun to play. Except for the red Flicky, you can go burn in hell, you piece of shit. 
Oh wait, 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 wait. Is one of them Sonic Rock? So uh, Sonic R. Please say it's Sonic R. No, no, Richie. The game's over. I just told you the answer. <laughs> I, I, I don't care. I thought there was two. To be fair, Sonic R is like my favourite uh, karaoke racing game. You know, it's pretty lit. <laughs> There's been like no attempt to try and recreate R's musical style since then. I mean, like some of the 3D games do have very uh, touchy feely. Uh, and credits music like Dear My Friend from Unleashed comes to mind immediately. But nothing in that, like, what genre is R anyway? Is it like lounge? I'm not even sure, but one thing that I think does get overlooked quite a lot, and it's bugging me now I can't remember the name of the song, but there's also a song that's in that style on the... Uh, is it Metropolis Street Racer, the Dreamcast game, that was composed by Richard Jakes and sung by uh, TJ Davis, that it sounds like it could be a Sonic R song. Huh, interesting. But that game in general has <laughs> such a weird, diverse soundtrack, and everything's scolded in like, its own genre. Like, there's this one rap song, like, I think it's Let's Get It On Tonight or something, that's just like plays to every exaggerated hip-hop trope possible, and it's fucking hilarious. Well, I guess we can just turn this into the Sonic Opinions Podcast Power Hour. Let's move on to the next one. Favourite soundtrack that comes after your actual favourite soundtrack, so your second place soundtrack. No 3 and Ks, no SA1 or SA2s. Hit me with it, Flame. Ooh, um... I don't know, because I... Each Sonic soundtrack is like so, like invested in its own identity that like it's hard to compare them. But I'd say in terms of the ones that are like, you know, I like a lot but gets pushed off to the side a little bit. I'd say underrated. Yes. Yeah. Rush. Rush is a great soundtrack. Yeah. Rush is pretty fucking great. And like it's again, it's so invested in its own identity. But it does clever stuff with samples and the actual instrumentation there is really cool too. And I love it. What about you, Rich? Underrated Sonic soundtrack? <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's underrated, but I'd say potentially um, Generations. Really? Just because, like, I'd say that my favourite Sonic soundtrack is Unleashed, just because I think that as a soundtrack, it is arguably the most effective at being, like, a complete soundtrack in terms of it's leitmotifs throughout the pieces, the cutscene songs, and also just a lot of the music in it is just really, really damn good, and also Endless Possibilities is glorious. Um, so the one after that would probably be Generations, and I'd say that's mostly because, I mean, it's a bit of a cheap one, because obviously it features most of the best music in Sonic anyway. Um... Uh, but I think even like some of the remixes are just really damn good remixes of the original songs. Like, I absolutely adore Rooftop Run, the original song, but I do also really, really, really like both of the Generations versions of Rooftop Run because they've just got their own little quirk to them. I prefer the classic one. I feel the, uh, you know, the modern, more festival kind of one is uh, good, but it doesn't rock as hard as the original. Oh, no. So, uh... Let, let, let's put opinions on the back burner because now we actually have to talk about the game again. This boss is pathetically easy. Once you get a chance to hit him, just keep slamming that controller forward and you'll beat him in like a few seconds. In fact, don't blink because you might actually end up missing this. Here we go. Yeah, it's just like the same pattern over and over the once you got him in a lock like that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and he sends out the butt eye mouth thing, and uh, he thinks that'll do him so good, but alas, it did not, and in fact, it only led to his destruction faster. Yeah, the eyeball dentata is like one of the most terrifying bits of visual imagery you could have. Like, it's actually pretty tame here, but just the idea and concept, like, nah, fam, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm going to assume that the giant eyeball scorpion thing wasn't in the Arabian Nights, so I won't ask you to look that up. Oh look! My second or third gold! Ooh! Well done, Tom. Cool, well we done. only got to part nine. <laughs> now you'll notice in the cutscene that uh, came before this boss fight, Sonic and Shara made their pinky promise thing. The problem with that is, <laughs> when we reached the Night Palace, they 
like overtly reference the fact that they had made that promise before. So this is what we were saying in a previous part that uh, maybe they should have put, put the story of this game in a fixed linear order because uh, it's already gone tits up. See, the thing is, like, they're talking now as though they're just discovering the World Rings for the first time. And if you just look at the level list, that might make sense because it's the boss of the first proper level. But because, like, the simplest way to the goal is to just, like, go through the stuff as it unlocks rather than come back here, like, it just, it feels so disjointed. Everything about this game's plot feels disjointed purely because of the game's structure. Mm, that, oh, definitely. I'll give it to Black Knight in that regard. You know, there's optional missions you can choose from, but uh, it does guide you better than Secret Rings did. I think the only time when Black Knight feels a little bit disjointed is that in the like later part of the game, when you know it like unlocks the other characters you can play as, there's like an intended level for each one of them to go through, and it doesn't tell you which is which until the cutscene after. And it it's kind of weird in that regard. But other than that, it's like Black Knight does always kind of point you in the right direction plot wise. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm in a pinch either way, right? Oh, Sonic, always looking on the bright side of things. Unfortunately, Shara is the neurotic genie type, so, uh, yeah, she'd rather worry. If you've got time to worry, then run. I believe that's what Sonic said in that critically acclaimed game from 2006. Oh, yeah, that wonderful piece of art. <laughs> Didn't you just say un Unleashed, sorry, 06? Wow, I made the same faux pas that the press did when Unleashed... <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm just going to say it. I think they had a problem with Unleashed more than it actually deserved. This is going back to what Richie said about Black Knight. I don't yes, care. they did. I don't care if this is controversial. I don't care if you liked or disliked the Werehog portions of Unleashed. I feel that solely because of 06, there's been a lot more negativity overall. Like, it's happening to forces right now, even if it does look a bit bland. I don't share Flame's opinion of it at all, but I do not see the reason for the overwhelming negativity towards it. Just because Mania is good does not mean forces will be shit, no matter how it appears to be right now. Basically, the point I was trying to get across before Flame could get a word in is basically 06 did ruin the franchise because we have to put up with Sonic was never good. Or Sonic got his first good game with Mania. Like, are you fucking kidding me? To be fair, that, like, we always see things like that because of, like, we follow this stuff 24-7, but usually it is just a bunch of hack journalists who come out with that because they need to fill, like, word limits and that. Like, I don't really see that opinion that much within the Sonic fan base. You know, the, like, 06 was shit, this is going to be shit. <laughs> like, I think a lot of the internal criticism seems a lot more rounded. Well... You clearly haven't been to neogaff.com then, but uh... I, I said internal criticism, not randos who are neogaff. <laughs> neogaff is just like a term for that kind of behaviour now, let's be fair. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's more a noun than an actual fucking... Uh... Actually, you know what, before I get any grammar mistakes wrong, let's move swiftly on. Also, I have a couple of mates who still visit neogaff, and I'd rather not lump them in. Thank you very much. Thankfully, this is not the egg mission that Richie spoke of before. The other one involved finding eggs and putting them into specific coded nests, or signed nests, shall we say. And uh, the big pig with that mission was if you got hit, you drop the egg and you'd have to get it all over again. Yep. And obviously you didn't know where the egg was for the corresponding nest, and so it was just it was just an absolute mess. And it was awful, and now I find out that it's frickin' optional, and now I just hate my life. Because I forced myself through that shite. And I didn't have to, god damn you, why didn't you guys tell me then again, to be fair? I don't think I was really a major part of Hellfire comms at that point, so you wouldn't have been able to tell me, but still, why didn't you tell me? Why can't we go back in time and warn you? Like, don't shit. fucking try to retcon me, I'm the leader of this group, I will not take undue criticism, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why give him undue criticism when there's plenty of due criticism? <laughs> hey, thank you very much. No one, by the way, no one asked my underrated Sonic soundtrack. I'm starting to feel a little bit left out right now. All right, Tom, I'll, prepare, I'll pretend to care for now. What's your underrated soundtrack? <sighs> well, <laughs> you see, you've put me, uh, you, you've put me on blast right now, and uh, there's so many good Sonic soundtracks. I think you actually had a point flame. It's kind of hard to narrow down which are underappreciated. I know which are outright terrible, 
looking at you, Chronicles. No, you don't get. Uh, you don't get. Uh, the, uh, Chronicles. Yeah, you don't get the cough of uh, trying to cover stuff up. I'm just going to say it loud, and I'm going to say it proud. You're shite. I don't care if you had like a few days to compose the soundtrack because they throw out all the tunes at the last minute. It's a, it's a crime against nature. Hey, look at that. Yeah, the fucking like some of them seem like like you know someone's just ripped a MIDI off line, off the internet and just slapped it in garage bands and stuck some stock instruments in it. That's how fucking lazy it sounds. Yeah, I'm 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 inducing a bit too much rage a hole here. So let's bring it back to the positive stuff. Favorite Sonic character who isn't Sonic? Flame. Shall I? Come on, did you need to ask? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna talk to someone with taste. Richie. Tails. Basically, I, th I think the reason that I've always liked Tails is because Tails is obviously the, like the younger brother type character. And that's the type of character that I've always drifted towards in pretty much any type of literature. Because I am the younger sibling in my family. And also the younger sibling type character in gaming always tends to be the slightly smaller one who's... Maybe less confident about things, or um, is like the slightly geekier one, and that's basically always been me. So I I I relate quite nicely to Tails <laughs> in terms of a lot of things. So I think that's why I've always found him to be my favourite Sonic friend. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. I'm glad Tails is your friend, by the way. That's a very sweet thing <laughs> to say. Uh, for me, it would actually be Blaze. Because she does everything Sonic does, but she's a cat and she's got fire powers. So that just ticks every box on my checklist, thank you very much. And I Tom always... lets the cat goes. <laughs> she's a cat and a girl. You know, you can't really clarify it any other way. Not that type of cat girl, thank you very much. Do not sully Blazer's name, thank you very much. Fucking hentai loving freak. Yeah, you know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've been exposed. Nobody would have ever thought I was laid otherwise. I gotta say, I always found uh, Sonic Rush, and I guess to a certain lesser extent Rush Adventure, to be kind of like Sonic and, Sonic and Knuckles 2, because uh, while Rush does have you go through levels in a different set order as of Blaze, there's still that whole kind of two sides of the same story thing that you've got in Sonic and Knuckles, and uh, I always liked that kind of parallel, and uh, it's been a long, long time since Knuckles has had the same kind of uh, status, shall we say. Granted, you can play as him, you know, solo in uh, Mania, which is pretty cool. I think my next playthrough will be... Uh, like solo knuckles, although there's another mode if you unlock it, which I won't mention here, which is pretty meme tastic, and I can't believe they actually put it in the game. So uh, I guess I'll save that one for last. How do you unlock that, by the way, Flame? I don't know. I haven't done that yet, but I've seen screens of it. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with getting those like little medals that you get in the uh, the non Emerald getting special stages? I'm not sure because I. Try to avoid this fear like the blade. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and I'm just out here going, I think I know what that's referring to, but I have absolutely no idea. Well, I don't want to randomly spoil people on Mania, like, outside of a Mania playthrough. If you're watching a Mania playthrough, you know you're going to get the full experience. And by the way, this mission is hilarious. Just wave the Wii Remote back and forth, get some momentum, and bada bang, we're off. Yeah. I'm, ha I'm happy with that as a level. I love them random kill one enemy missions. <laughs> How fast do you have to be bucket to get a gold? <laughs> it's like you, you had to kill one guy and you still only got a bronze. Good job. <laughs> My guess is that you either need to get it like up the first swing or you need to get all of the fire souls as you cause it looked like you had to fall down to get the fire souls, so I think that's probably how you get to the gold rank in that one. Possibly, possibly. I think this game's scoring system is kind of abstract, because I don't think it actually rates you. Like, a lot of Sonic games you get to the end and it sort of counts down, like, points, like, time bonus, rings bonus, stuff like that. It's kind of just, you get your time and the thing, so I don't know what else factors into it. Alright, we've got a typical Rampage mission here, lads, so, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, 
another Sonic question that I can ask you. Uh, at least there was only one part of this playthrough that devolved for this, and you know, it is the one where we are literally doing random missions, so uh, cut us some slack. I mean, you cut us slack already, but cut us more. Go even further beyond with the slack cutting. <laughs> Alright, uh, worst Sonic game. Richie? Chronicles, 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 for the love of God, it's Chronicles. Okay. Flame? Uh, this. At least the ones I've played. I can't comment on Chronicles, like, it looks like an absolute wank, but it's the sort of thing I would need to play to verify for myself. But... Well, we'll do a play for of it next year, and you'll see just exactly what it's all about. Oh, oh! Tom, do not put me through that, please! Well, I'm sorry, Richie, you want them to be part of the Sonic Coms, mate. You're gonna be part of the Sonic Coms. Did he, or did we just drag him in? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know, we had to replace FT somehow, I guess. <laughs> My worst or most disliked Sonic game, because there are a, a titch, a tit even, of good elements here and there. Like the comic that it spawned and obviously the TV show that it was advertising is Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. I'm sorry, it is a boring, bland, mostly joyless game that literally exists just to sell a TV show. And I don't find it all that fun Honestly, I don't find the comparisons to SA1 fair at all, and I don't know. I think if you just made it purely like um, platforming and whatnot, because the platforming, in most cases, is it's serviceable. I won't call it exciting, but it works. It's just the combat that's dull as fuck, and the weapon system that's in there for God knows why, because you so very rarely get a weapon. Yeah, it's like they took... The combat was like the part everyone criticised from Unleashed, so they brought it back and made it even more dull and repetitive. Because, like, to cut the Werehog some slack, you can upgrade shit, you can do cool stunts once you level up. Whereas, like, Boomer's Luke is literally a button masher. Yeah, it is. The platforming, like you say, it's the highlight of it. To me, it's okay. It's very slow, which kind of goes against the point of Sonic, what sets Sonic, Sonic apart from other platformers, so it just becomes, like, generic platformer. Yeah, I don't understand why you can't go, like, well, Sonic fast, it's a fucking term. In the overworld, you have, like, the spin dash, but that's about it, you can't boost at all. Yeah, and the spin dash is fucking shit, like, you can go a couple of foot in front of you and then it stops completely. <laughs> like, there are so many fundamental problems with that game, it's unreal. Well, mm, dare I put it next year as well? Uh, yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Hell Dragon and I did a stream of it, but uh, I want a proper playthrough, thank you very much. I do so love double dipping. <laughs> you want a proper playthrough where you don't have your fucking screen tearing every five seconds, that'd be nice. Well, I'm sorry I was using the hop at the time, so eat me. <laughs> it sure is 2012 up in it. <laughs> Tom, I have to say, you're, you're making me very, very tempted to leave Hellfire Comms at the end of this year if you're going to put me through Chronicles and bloody Rise of Lyric as well. Well, I'm sorry I put a blood curse on you, so you actually can't leave. You'll find there's invisible walls everywhere. Like someone didn't program uh, fucking life properly or anything. Oh, here's the line! It might even open the gates of hell! <gasps> it's... it's... I don't want to say cool, it's edgy as fuck, but uh... At least they're using hell in the biblical sense, I'll give them credit for that. This is true, and also it's fitting considering the world that it's in, because... Obviously a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with is sort of hellish, and... Like... Genies and jinns are sometimes obviously seen as beings from hell, so it is actually in keeping. It's just Sonic saying hell is just like, whoa, wait, what? Alrighty, I guess it's time to get the final world ring. Are you ready, my dears? Uh, ready is a strong word, but I'm watching the video, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we have another one of these race missions. I, I believe the last one we had was in the Return to Santa Oasis. I don't. I think it is just these two that are mandatory on it, Tom. I don't think we have any others. Uh, off the top of my head, if they're in the playthrough, then yes, the only ones that are mandatory are the only ones we showed. <laughs> yeah. So the thing with all these missions is they start to blend together in my mind after a while. And I love this guy, by the way. He doesn't actually attack you. He just pops up and chills there for a minute. It's like. 
Dude, you're gonna move out the fucking way anytime soon. Dude, no, I just love how Uhu obeys the rules of the race. Like, that's gotta be Sonic, because, uh... Actually, if Sonic would just push past him and, like, win the race, he's all about speed. I mean, uh, he is a good character at heart, but he's a, he's a cheeky prankster as well as our Son Son. Please don't ever say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what possessed me there, I'm sorry. But what's cool is if you've got a full soul gauge, boost away, and look at that distance fly. Beautiful. <laughs> that's, that's fucking cheating. Like, he was being a team player, he was being fair, and like, giving you a chance, then, then you go and use your fucking overpowered attack. Although, with you dawdling around here, he's going to catch back up to you soon enough. Nah, that's fine, we're too far away for him to ever catch up, it's all good in the hood. And to be fair, considering how much of a dick he is in some of his other race missions, which are obviously optional, um, yeah, he, he deserves that completely and utterly, because, yeah, those races are awful. You uh, got something you're not telling us, Rich? No. Okay. I, I thought you just so. had, I thought you had another egg mission scenario on your hands, and I thought we'd have an interesting story. Fuck me, I guess. All right, we're moving on to the next mission here, and I got another question for your favourite final boss in a Sonic game, Flame. Um, I would lean mostly on Final Hazard, like. It's mainly just the fact that it's an easy boss that's like that catharsis after the bio lizard, and also Live and Learn is a fucking jam. They just kind of go hand in hand. You're taking down the last phase, and you got rocking music, and you know it's like your victory now. <laughs> and like if I were to give like a close second, and probably a random pick for some people, but I'd say Solaris. Okay, I can see why I I wouldn't pick it because. He can also be a bit tricky to beat, so you don't have that same catharsis after going through the final level and beating Biolizard and then you get the awesome stuff that is the final hazard. No, you have to deal with end of the world before you get to Solaris. Oh yeah, fuck end of the world. That's like the worst level that is in DLC. I'm assuming you're talking about Solaris Phase 2, by the way. Well, Phase 2 has the amazing remix of his world, doesn't it? Like, it is where the... Uh, boss attacks go completely fucking ballistic though, so you do have to be on, on the ball a bit more than you do during phase one, because phase one, it tricks you by like putting you up first with Sonic, when I recall you have to weaken him down with either Shadow or Silver first and then go back to Sonic, which is odd. But once you get the hang of, like, you know, knock out the shield, then go in for the kill with Sonic, then it's a really fun fight. Fair enough. So, uh, Final Hazard first, runner-up Solaris, yeah? Yeah, that's mine. Alright, Rich, uh, same to you, I guess. Whee! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I love doing that. That, that, that was glorious. Um, I'd say my favourite is actually probably Perfect Dark Gaia. And just, uh. just like, I, ha I know that... Dark Gaia has problems, and I had frustration with, with Dark Gaia, and Perfect Dark Gaia isn't necessarily the best gameplay-wise final boss, but I think because of how it fits within the end of Sonic Unleashed, it just has a very special place in my heart, and that's kind of the best way I can really describe it. I say runner-up, probably the Mega Wisp armor from Colors, I think. Oh, I was actually going to pick that as my order on, so you have, you're making me uh, think on my feet here. Well, you see, that, that that's just what I'm here to do for you. Just make you think on your feet by stealing your answers. And read fables verbatim. I think you're fine. But uh, why do you like uh, the Mega Wisp armor so much, mate? Um, I suppose because... It's that whole thing of an enemy using your own skills against you in new and unique ways. Oh, that's always hard. Because that's always quite a cool thing, and then uh, there's obviously the whole phase two thing where the Reach for the Stars orchestrally version of the theme comes in, and that's quite an epic moment. My only thing with that fight is I just wish that it was maybe a wee bit longer, so you actually got to experience more of that glorious orchestral mix of the song. To this day, I've heard tell that he has a hover wisp attack where he drops bombs, but I have never, ever seen it. So I think the internet may be telling porcupines. Why would someone go on the internet and lie like that? I don't know. Fame, possibly. Money. 
doubtful, add Apocalypse, etc. Uh, for me, number one's got to be Final Hazard for all the reasons Flame mentioned earlier. It's probably the perfect, you know, Sonic final boss. Um, runner up. I'm gonna cheat and have a tie. Yeah, perfect Dark Gaia and the uh, the Negawis Farmer from Colors Wii. DS1 is fine, but uh, that's not the true final boss of the game. <laughs> I won't mention what it is, just in case you haven't played it yet. For all the same reasons, of course, you know, because uh, fuck coming up with my own opinions and ideas. I'll just piggyback off, piggyback off more successful and intelligent people. It's totally fair. All right, now least favorite Sonic final boss flame. Well, let's see if I'm still in the group at the end of this video because I will say perfect dark Gaia in the HD version. Oh, burn the witch, burn the witch. No, I just find there's a few too many layers of multitasking for my liking, like the things firing at you, the clusterfuck of colors with lasers coming from them while you're trying to do the sort of loopy thingy around the dragon head things. There's proper terms for these things I know, but fuck it. <laughs> but I, I just really absolutely do not like this. It's like the opposite effect I have for like the Final Hazard. It's like we have a like kind of a more difficult lead up part to it, or in, in this case a really draining regular Dark Gaia fight. And instead of getting a cathartic payoff, you get more bullshit. And I just don't like it. I don't know, I find that pretty cathartic, but uh, I understand where you're coming from. What about you, Rich? The final boss of Sonic and the Secret Link. Secret Links? Secret Rings. Because it's the only final boss ever that I have ever played that has actually caused me physical pain wow. to battle. So, yet yeah, he could just go sod off. And I will obviously moan a bit about him when we actually get to the final boss. Um, but yeah, that is easily my least favourite boss fight ever. Um, runner up in terms of least favourite, it's probably going to get me murdered, but it's actually Final Hazard. Like, I love Live and Learn. That's amazing. I think it's just because gameplay wise, it's a little bit messy. I mean, I, I, I suppose part of my frustration comes with the follow on from. Bio Lizard, because Bio Lizard is such a bullshit fight. Well, that's a penultimate boss, that's not really fair. Yeah, and I think my frustrations kind of then flowed through into Final Hazard because I just ended up with the same slightly buggy, messy fight. That while it was cool in concept and the music was cool and the visuals were cool, just gameplay wise, it just proved to be slightly more frustrating than it needed to be. Uh, let's see, um, I mean, sadly have a bunch to choose from, because while Sonic games traditionally have good final bosses, there's plenty that don't as well, so uh, I'm just going to give you my top five, um, in no particular order. Number one, the final boss of Sonic 4 Episode 1, oh, yes. which is a, a, str a string of boss refights, and then a worse version of uh, Sonic 2's final boss, at least just in terms of, um, you know graphical style and whatnot, it does it no favours. Bitch looks like it's retaining war, is what I'm trying to say. Number two, we have the final boss of Sonic Chronicles, which is a fucking quick time event. And then you have Sonic and Tails. Then you have Sonic and Tails reading the credits and patting uh, Bioware's developers on the back. Wow, doctors and game designers? It still brings my piss to a boil to this very day. And you have to, just to put the cherry on top of the shit Sunday, you have to scroll through them yourself. It doesn't auto-scroll, so uh, you've got to be paying attention. And uh, number three, um, Time Eater uh, in uh, yeah. the HD version. Just not a fun boss at all. Uh, this might annoy some people. This is totally on me. It's not much to do with the final boss itself, but I still have to put it here. Sonic 2's final boss, uh, the Mega Drive Genesis version. I have a bit of a grudge against like any kind of boss fight or challenge that makes me fight it with zero rings or health options. I just find it unfair. You know, whether you can get through it just fine is up to you. There are hitbox problems on the Egg Robo that I take issue with, and I'm sorry, it's not a fun boss fight, and it's kind of hard to top Doomsday Zone, so, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. And, uh, that was four, right? I've got one more? Yes, I think so. 
Okay, but now I've got a bunch to choose from. Huh. Uh, I guess I'll go with Devil Doom from uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, the music is good, but uh, the fight itself is just... It's just kind of a clusterfuck, really. It's like a less fun version of Metal Overlord. Mm, yeah, I kind of see where you're coming from, but I don't really see it as that offensive. It's more just to kind of in the middle sort of boss for me. Well, you know, I haven't beaten stuff like uh, Sonic Blast, so uh, I can't exactly put that on my on my final boss list. But uh, who knows? Maybe we'll be covering that next year. Mm, oh, again, I have footage, so whenever. <laughs> uh. I believe this is uh, the last mission in Night Palace, and be very careful here, because uh, if you don't launch at the right time, you can go right through uh, that landing point, and uh, yeah, that's happened more than once. The salt was real, ladies and germs, the salt was real. <laughs> yeah. Well, going back a bit, like rewinding a bit, to you talking about Sonic 2's boss, the problem being that it's doesn't really give you that leeway. I'm finding more that I, it's not that as a concept that bugs me so much with bosses like that, and I'm talking in all games that are like it, not just Sonic here. It, it's more when they do stuff like that with a limited life system. Yes, yeah. And the reason for that is that that's the kind of boss, I don't mind bosses being really hard like that, but when you have a really hard boss, the natural sort of learning process is that you're going to make mistakes. And that's fine, that's how you get better at the game. And But the thing there is that if you only get, like, say, three or four mistake allowance, then you don't have that opportunity. And if you want to go back to it, unless you've been stocking up on continues, you're kind of fucked. And it kind of the antithesis of, like, letting you learn the game for yourself. Understandable. Yes, Flame brings up a very valid point, which is... Uh... Interesting, given his other opinion span in this part, but uh, I've had fun uh, doing this whole Sonic trivia thing. We'll have to do it again sometime when we have a part like this. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, it depends the next time we can have a part with basically nothing to talk about and we can bullshit the whole time. Let's look forward to that. <laughs> the next two playthroughs this year are Mania in November and I guess Forces in December, so uh, we'll have plenty to talk about there. But, uh, eh, next year perhaps. Chronicles is awaiting. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, that's a that's a good one. Now let's completely ignore the fact that I can emulate DS well. And Tom, you're the only one with the DS recorder, aren't you? Oh, it sucks for you. I, I don't care, mate. I'll gladly suffer if you two suffer along with me. Uh, uh, like going as someone who knows basically nothing about it, is there at least interesting stuff to talk about with the story itself? <laughs> that's the decider here. <laughs> No. There's, there's stuff to talk about. Whether, whether it be classified as interesting is a completely different kettle of fish. Interesting can also be defined as stupid, by the way. I'm also open to that. <laughs> well, sadly it falls in the middle, where it's neither exciting nor stupid enough to be considered interesting. But uh, we're going to get a little bit of backstory now of the Razor Jin himself. Thinking about Shara? What is it? How do you and the Razor Jin? Know each other. You're asking this now? Yeah. You think you'd ask it earlier, the second the Razor Jin brought up the fact that he knew Shara? Okay. Yeah, you, you would have thought so, but this is Sonic, and um, also the plot of this game is so disjointed that it was never going to make any sense anyway. Yeah, this is meant to be the second cutscene, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Flame, he's not telling the truth, by the way. I admittedly love the uh, the instrumental version of uh, this particular theme. What's it called, Flame? I don't know. I have more volume down. Is it worth a chance? I believe it's worth a chance. He had a renewed hatred of people. Yeah, also, there is no way in hell I'm taking the Eraser Jin as a sympathetic villain. He was a dick to begin with, he was given punishment, and then instead of reforming, he just went right back to being a cunt again. So please tell me, where is the part where he's been wrong in this story? We want a sweet ending. <laughs> well, there's no ending sweeter than finishing Sonic and the Secret Rings, so we'll see you guys next time for the final part of the playthrough where we take the world rings, my dear, to the Eraser Gin and finish this. See you then.